Now, another element that uh, Ehrman will sometimes bring up is the idea of how, how exalted a picture of Jesus there was in the first century. And the idea is, is that the Nicene Creed and these creeds that elevate Jesus to a very high standard uh, represent only a thin strand of Christianity in the first century and not the larger Christian movement. In fact, this is a misrepresentation of, of the situation. Virtually every strand of Christian belief in the first and second centuries saw Jesus as a very transcendent figure. Maybe not full son of God, but certainly a very transcendent figure. Some of the movements debated whether Jesus could actually be human. He was so transcendent. The only exception to this, and this is an important one, were the Ebionites. The Ebionites were Jewish believers who did not accept an exalted view of Jesus, and they were seen as outsiders. Now, for Ehrman, the Ebionites claim to go all the way back to James and have roots in, in the Jewish Christianity of the James-Peter kind of ilk. But this is what Ehrman is not telling you. The Ebionites are but one strand of this Jewish Christian rootage early Christian movement. That was sloppily said, but I hope you got it. The second group that also was Jewish Christian was known as the Nazarenes. The Nazarenes were very orthodox in their Christology, or at least what reflected later orthodoxy. They had a high view of Jesus. So the Ebionites aren't the only ones who make the claim going back to James. There's another group, very orthodox, that also claims James in their roots, and that fits the general testimony of what we have from a variety of books, from a variety of authors, about the early Christian views about Jesus. We know Jesus is worshipped very early on because in hymns embedded in Paul's letters that he probably didn't write but that reflect the situation of churches in the, in the early 60s, we know that Jesus is being worshipped as God because we have Philippians 2, the hymn that says, Every knee will bow and every one tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Language that comes out of the book of Isaiah that describes in the Old Testament the God of Israel. But here it's being applied to Jesus. And a substitution is made, just a straightforward substitution. So my point is this that in the earliest period we see this early Christology, this early high Christology, it's pretty much across the board, certainly a transcendent Jesus is very much across the board, even in, in uh, movements that end up uh, having roots, it looks like in more Gnostic Christianity, have a more transcendent Jesus, we see this in Gospel of Thomas and works such as this. And the idea that there was a kind of human Jesus in the background that represents the historical Jesus actually has very little evidence to go for it. 